the other day, hey? Nice to meet you. I'll put you over to Lani. Hi everyone. I would never have imagined I would attend any kind of cannabis march in my life. Um, but I'm just an everyday mum who basically, due to a turn of events, has made me look at this plant like never before. I've researched, studied this plant, been amazed at its properties and its ability to help people and to change their lives for the better. My 15-year-old son, Lindsay, has been very sick now for over three years. After two long years of debilitating illness, he was diagnosed with a uh, brain tumour in his left temporal lobe. At first, as a family, we were optimistic, thinking that he could simply go in for surgery, simply go in for surgery and have the tumour removed. However, upon meeting with the neurosurgeon, we soon learned that surgery was not recommended for his tumour due to the location. His tumour was located in the critical functioning part of the brain, which took care of things like communication, learning and development and memory. We were told by this surgeon that our son would not be likely to come out of surgery the same way he went in. The tumour was believed to be most likely a rare type of glioma, which accounts for approximately 2-3% to of brain tumours diagnosed globally. For this type of tumour, chemotherapy and radiation therapy was not an option. So here in Australia, we were not left with any suitable treatment options for our son, we believed. We had already seen our son suffer terribly with debilitating headaches, nausea, vomiting and fatigue for over two years and not being able to regularly attend school or live a normal life. The symptoms then started to include seizures. He would usually have up to three focal seizures a day and approximately one grand mal seizure every week and a half. We were simply not prepared to sit back and watch our son's health deteriorate further. At first, my son and I travelled alone to the US for a vaccine treatment not available in Australia. It was a natural vaccine treatment. However, when a scan was done four weeks later, doctors believed that the tumour was growing. We were then recommended to travel to Washington State for medical treatment. It was at this point that medical cannabis was recommended for our son. In a legal state, Lindsay started on cannabis oil as well as vaporising the dried herb for pain and for nausea. Research overseas has shown that medical cannabis causes cell death to glioma cancer cells whilst protecting the healthy cells in the brain. Yeah. Lindsay had suffered from debilitating headaches and not able to be relieved by painkillers. These headaches were able to be completely relieved within a minute of vaporising cannabis. Within seven weeks of starting the cannabis treatment, Lindsay's tumour had reduced by half the size. Yeah. <laughs> However, due to visa constraints, we had to return back to Australia. We were so relieved to be making progress, but so torn knowing that we had to obtain the treatment legally we would have to travel back to the USA again, leaving my husband, my youngest son behind, Lindsay leaving his friends and his beloved dog behind. Unfortunately, the time off treatment in Australia cost our son. The tumour grew four millimetres within a very short seven weeks. The following trip to the US, we were flat out just trying to keep the tumour stable. We have just returned to the US for a third trip and again, this time we've actually received, we have achieved further shrinkage to this tumour. During this trip, this tumour shrank by three millimetres within five weeks of treatment. We're fighting this thing a millimetre at a time, but we're getting there. In the USA, on the cannabis treatment, his level of seizures reduced by over 70%. During our most recent trip to the US, he did not experience any grand mal seizures. 
In Australia, high levels of anti-seizure drugs had not been controlling his seizures at all. And doctors were preparing to increase his level of anti-seizure drugs. In fact, the last trip we when we came back, the doctors were afraid to, to actually prescribe him painkillers because of the damage that the anti-seizure drugs were doing to his liver. Potentially causing, potentially threatening permanent liver damage. Uncontrolled seizures from epilepsy strikes fear into any parent. Heart, knowing, not knowing when or where their child might be and when these terrible seizures might strike. Risks of injury and wondering if your child will come out of a seizure the same way. To achieve seizure reduction was a massive relief to us as a family. Already there has been tremendous research done by other countries such as Italy, Spain and Israel overseas. Just to name a few proving the amazing medical benefits of cannabis. The documented use of cannabis as a safe and effective therapeutic plant dates back to 2700 BC. Between 1840 and 1900, European and American journals of medicine published more than 100 articles on the therapeutic use of cannabis. There is a growing body of clinical data which supports the use of cannabis for medical purposes. The science is already there. Many other countries have embraced this treatment. However, Australia falls so far behind. It's all about money. In Australia, brain cancer kills more children than any other disease. It is the least funded and the most deadly form of cancer in Australia. They tell us that there is no known cure for brain cancer. When looking at cannabis as a treatment for our son, the absolute worst case scenario is that he can achieve massive seizure reduction or a significant seizure reduction, some freedom from pain and some quality of life and freedom from nausea and suffering. The best case scenario is that he could continue, if he could continue to have this treatment, he could potentially continue to have a reduction in his tumour size. We have already seen this happen. One of Lindsay's doctors in the USA that recommends medical cannabis for many brain tumour patients. And I'd, I'd like to mention that a number of these patients have had complete remission from stage four cancer. He recommends juicing the plant as well as the cannabis oil. The whole plant has many benefits in its most natural state. It's time that the Australian politicians accept that this plant has the ability to help so many of the sick and dying people in Australia with so many different conditions. There is no need to try and reinvent the wheel. The research has been done. Australia needs to look to these other countries and turn to the experts globally in this field. For the sake of my son and many other Australians suffering at this time, I thank the Australian public that have supported this cause and now appeal to the Australian Government to take immediate action to make this medical treatment available in Australia. Thank you. Wow, amazing stories, hey guys? Um, now it's my turn. Up until uh, two months ago, 6th of January, never heard of or never been really associated close with cancers. Um, oh, no, no, cancers are long.